those questions. And we're going to try and knock out some of the questions that we've had submitted to the chat box uh, right now. One of them that was uh, asked earlier from William in South Dakota are in building new bonds, barns that completely avoid methane production from livestock manure. Can these, can these uh, facilities get credits? And, and I'm going to assume here we're going to talk to talk about carbon credits and let Jim respond to that. And my message would be it depends. Uh, it, um, it's possible that there would be a credit opportunity there. Uh, a couple of things that you'd have to look at is um, uh, the, the barns that are being built. Um, I, I would just need to know more technical information. But William, I'd invite you to uh, uh, send me some information uh, about it, either by, you know, call me or send some detail uh, on an email, and we can start to look at that possibility. But we're, we are developing a protocol now that um, directed more at composting for methane avoidance, but uh, there, there could quite possibly be other opportunities. All right, Jim, on the, ne the next question, on these covered lagoon projects, uh, does ECC own the, the, the cover and the credit, and if so, for forever or for a limited number of years? No, I saw that question, too, and it is a, it is a limited term. Uh, and there are a couple of different ways that, that we can do the program with the, uh, with the producer. But it is a limited term. Uh, the cover itself has a limited life. Uh, there, there are some that have been out there for 20 years, but we think uh, more realistically it's a 15-year lifespan. And uh, our, our initial term is for 10 years, all of our projects. We okay. hope, I thought uh, I saw another question. Uh, it's probably further down in here. But are credits per each cow, per each year, each day, or each month? Why don't you address yeah, that the, one? The question you? there from Megan about, uh, I think was about the slide there. It was four credits per cow, and that's kind of an annual basis. So, and, and that can go anywhere from about, depending on the state-by-state -state baseline, um, some of the northern states might be limited to um, over three credits a cow. Um, some of them are close to four. Down in the southwest, um, the limit, the baseline limit, is closer to five or six credits a cow. All right. Uh, there is a question in here on, by burning off the methane, aren't we losing a lot of nitrogen uh, fertilizer compared to co composting? And I, I thought there was another question somewhere. Yeah, there's another nutrient question in there. Um, what I understand about nutrients is, um, very limited, especially considering the audience I'm talking to. But what I understand or what um, the way the technical people have explained it to me is that the, the nutrients in a, whether it's a digester or even a covered lagoon digester, nutrients are conserved in that process. Um, there is um, potentially um, some ammonia that gets burned if there isn't a, a two-stage process in the in the cover project, we often will look to cover, you know, just one stage of a lagoon or even a partial, do um, partial lagoon covers. But what we're looking to do is to optim or to optimize the amount of methane we capture per dollar invested. Looking for most cases in the northern uh, hemisphere. Northern climates about 60 days of retention time to get out an optimum amount of the methane. That means that there is going to be a subsequent stage that will be aerobic. It will be more of a conventional um, aerobic lagoon situation. So um, the nutrient flows through there. Um, a lot of it's going to be conserved during digestion, but then in the aerobic part, you'll get a little bit of ammonia blow off. Um, I don't think um, the lagoon's really not going to, the covered part is not going to change the, the nitrogen a whole lot. And, and I, w I would echo that from the, from the data I've seen on uh, 
anaerobic digesters, either covered lagoons or in-vessel digesters. You may lose a, a little bit of nitrogen, but it's uh, not, not significant, uh, especially compared to like a, a, a composting situation where, where you're going to lose probably more uh, nitrogen than you would in a covered lagoon. Um, let's try and move, move on here. Uh, another, I guess, quick one that I think you could knock out is on the cone farms in New York. What was that income per cow? Well, the income per cow is going to uh, vary. So if you had uh, four credits per cow, credits right now are worth about, um, I think last time I looked, about 650 on the exchange. So that would generate uh, upwards of $25 a year per cow. Uh, but we, as everyone, I think, expects those values to increase over time as the market develops. And the way we've established the program, the farmer will share in that value uh, no matter how high it goes. All right. Uh, Don Hodge asks, uh, Hanson at NOAA says that we must reduce atmospheric carbon to 350 parts per million to maintain the climate conditions similar to those in which civilization developed. From your graph, it appears carbon trading might help us reach 450 to 550. Uh, any comments on that? I think we're actually over 350 now as a, as a, as a world. And um, there's a certain amount of, of global warming that is already programmed in, depending on how much um, carbon dioxide and, and other greenhouse gases are in the atmosphere we're going to see additional warming um, over the next decade. So the challenge for everyone is to try and achieve um, some stability in that increasing number. And that graph shows exactly uh, the point is how these different cap and trade programs could have helped the United States achieve some stability. Uh, researchers, and I encourage people to look for them, where they talk about stabilization wedges. And the idea that um, you can look at the, the whole notion of stabilization as a kind of a pie or a pie chart and, and looking to achieve certain stabilization by uh, different activities, energy efficiency to renewable fuels, biofuels, all these things are playing a part. There's no single answer to it, obviously. Everybody gets to play a part. All right, Dale, I'm having trouble with, with one of my connections, but I seem to recall there was a question on uh, comparing small farms and large farms in, in New York. Oh, yeah, that was a great question uh, from Amy. Um, yeah, um, we, we hope or we expect that lagoon covers will help with a lot of that uh, odor uh, generated from some of the larger farms. Um, the smaller, more pasture-based farms, um, they really don't have a, a methane baseline to look at. So there's um, not a particular opportunity there. Um, uh, I'm not sure of the cost differences in terms of operating a, a smaller pasture-based farm, what the per cow cost of that is versus some uh, larger operations. I think our farmers and, and we too are hoping that uh, the cover on the lagoon is, is going to help keep keep some of that odor down. All right. Uh, like I said, I'm having some technical difficulties here. Reed. There was a question there from uh, Dwayne about um, credits um, for for ranchers and forestry, um, and that's a that's a good question about business as usual. And typically, Duane, what, uh, what the ranch community and, and foresters are able to get credit for right now is, is when they add to their stock. So if they're adding to their forest stock, growing new trees on land that, that wasn't forested, or converting land to ranch land, um, that's where the credit opportunity lies right now.
All right, uh, Dale, in terms of the New York City watershed project of the 247 farms, what percent uh, of, of the farmers in the watershed is that? Um, that's, we have something um, about 95% um, participation by farmers in the watershed. There, there are still a few uh, holdouts who probably will never do anything with the government, but uh, we're doing pretty well. All right. What about the question on in the New York watershed lake monitor, monitoring performed demonstrator established BMP impact? Uh, how, how have you been doing that? Um, well, like I said, there's lots of agencies involved here and um, New York City DEP does monitoring, New York State uh, Environmental Conservation does monitoring, um, and some of the results that I showed at the end of my, my PowerPoint um, showed the levels that we've been able to document of, uh, of reductions. All right. Uh, Jim, on, on the last question that was just recently put it there, can you discuss a little, any accepted carbon credit programs for manure composting? Yes, we expect that to become part of this uh, new protocol for avoided methane. That would be for a, a new facility that was, um, you know, where the solids and, and liquids had been going to liquid storage, uh, and where it's stored for a, a period of time where it would cause methane, and now they're converting over to a, a composting facility, uh, you know, pulling out the uh, solids or using the, the entire manure stream in combination with other materials um, compost. It has to be an active composting uh, program. It can't just be a stack and rot kind of uh, program. It has to be pretty active and well maintained and, and at the same time well monitored. Uh, that, that could well be part of this new protocol. All right, there were a couple questions that were sort of similar in terms of electric utilities, uh, one of them being the Cayuga County Conservation District constructing a bio, biogas plant, and there was another green power program. Uh, I would classify these as uh, probably from, from Susie's thing, green payments for our services. And a number of states have green green power requirements, uh, and and the, the the ag community can easily participate in this. This is not really related to cap and trade or carbon credits, I don't believe, but uh, uh, centered around the creating a demand for green energy sources. Uh, and and. and it's another example of a market-based payment where, where, where different states have developed, different states and even uh, local uh, counties have developed programs to encourage green power. Uh, Jim or Dale, do you all have any comments on that? Yeah, I'd like to throw in, um, there is a distinction to be made though. You're, you're absolutely right. Uh, many states now have renewable portfolio standards that require the utilities operating in those states to have a certain percentage of green power. One of the ways that those utilities accomplish that is through the purchase of renewable energy credits or green tags, uh, all kinds of names for these instruments, but they basically represent all the environmental benefits, the air pollution and water pollution benefits that come from producing a megawatt of green power. The production of that green power, in the case of uh, a biogas digester, would have some benefit in terms of reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions because you're now using a renewable fuel instead of fossil fuel to produce that power. That's going to keep some carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. It's actually a different kind of greenhouse gas benefit than what the digester does by keeping methane out of the atmosphere. So a typical 
biogas digester or covered lagoon digester can actually have two greenhouse gas benefits. One of it, one of it, one is reducing the methane, and the other, if they're using the gas productively for electricity or fuel, is reducing the the carbon dioxide from the production of that electricity. Um, the, the cow power program in Vermont, I think, when they make payments to farmers for green power, um, they're calculating that they're providing enough payment to capture both of those greenhouse gas benefits. So they're actually taking all of the carbon credit opportunity. I think in Wisconsin, many of the utilities do the same thing. But it's an important distinction for the producers to understand because they might be able to negotiate a, a situation where the green power credit goes to the utility in exchange for a larger payment for the elect green electricity. But they might be able to hold on to the methane uh, reduction credit and actually monetize that credit for their own benefit. So an important distinction for, for everyone to understand and uh, make sure their producers understand as well. All right. Uh, Amy asks, how stable is the funding for the New York City program? Um, our funding is, is fairly stable, um, partly because um, New York City is required in their filtration avoidance determination uh, that EPA grants them um, to continue the watershed ag program and continue these programs with the farms. So um, uh, as long as they're required to do it, they'll continue to fund it. All right. And one final question that I picked out from the, the list was, you know, does this present a opportunity for smaller, organic, or more sustainable farms? And, you know, I would say uh, within all of these programs, there are opportunities, uh, you know, Granted, the number of credits generated on a small farm may be uh, less, but the opportunity to capitalize on uh, consumer demand and uh, green labeling and other type market, market incentives might be greater on some of the smaller farms. Uh, Dale or uh, Jim, do you all have comments to add to that? Uh, I would just add, um, you know, water quality wise, um, if you're concerned about water in a certain watershed uh, like ours, there are no large farms in our watershed, so it all has to come from small farms. Um, and I guess the other thing I would say is just because a farm is small or based on grazing doesn't mean that they are necessarily um, having a different impact on water quality. It all depends on the practices on those farms. And so in that way, I don't see any, any difference. Um, small farms are needed the same way large farms are. And in terms of the carbon credit markets, it all goes back to the basic concept that um, um, how much methane or how much of a greenhouse gas is currently being produced, and then how much of it is changed or reduced by a project. So we're limited right now as a company in that the market, where the market is today, is at current prices, supports projects where there's a lot of methane or a lot of greenhouse gases that can be reduced. Uh, as the market grows, more and more farms are going to get to participate. But it has to do with size as well as what the current practices are and how much greenhouse gas is being emitted by those current practices. So different practices are going to have different impacts. Great. Well, with that, I think we are uh, past our time, allotted time limit. So I want to thank uh, all of you for attending today and especially thank our, our